As golfers, we are often led to make decisions on what we buy or at least even what we try based on the way a manufacturer categorizes a product. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you that that should not be the case. And quite honestly, one of these products does something totally different than what they actually suggest it should. Yeah, in today's video, we're gonna look at two products from Callaway. One is the Apex UW, a utility wood with 21 degrees aloft will be the one that I am testing. I'm gonna put it up against the Paradigm 7 wood, which is again, 21 degrees of loft. They're both aimed in terms of the player type as very different categories. But what, like I said, I will show you in today's video, we shouldn't pay too much attention to that in terms of marketing spiel and often test these theories out for ourselves, which is gonna be very evident when we get to some Trackman data. Now, before we get into the testing, let's talk about what is different between these two clubs. The Apex UW has got weight very much forward. It almost sits between a hybrid and a fairway wood in terms of the size of its profile. And it's also got a shaft that is one inch shorter than that in the seven wood of the Paradigm. Now the Paradigm on the other hand is very much about uh, the kind of more versatile club aimed at the mass market. Apex UW aimed theoretically at the better player. Very easy to use, very easy to get airborne. It is, like I said, aimed at the masses. Both of these are non-adjustable. Now, many long-term viewers of the channel will be aware that I'm very much uh, positive and an advocate of these type of clubs in the bags of average golfers. The reason for that is twofold. Seven Woods for me offer a great deal of versatility out on the golf course. They're a lot easier to use on the other end of the spectrum, which maybe is a three wood because of the amount of loft obviously that's on them. But then there's also that shorter shaft length, which gives us a great deal more control. I think the kind of, it's almost for me the standout product within the Callaway Paradigm lineup has been their Seven Wood and their Heaven Wood, which again have got very much a lot of similarities but some slight differences as well. They've just got a whole lot of control element that just makes this thing so, so playable, very fast off the face. Not the best of swings there, not too sure, maybe a little bit heely, but that ball just fires out there. Still launches the ball incredibly high. And it's just, for, for the majority of golfers, let's say, unless you're playing in incredibly windy conditions, then this kind of club as a substitute for the long end of the bag, or irons maybe in the long end of the bag, is an absolute no-brainer. That's better. A ball flight is incredible. Descent angle will be incredible. Plenty of options in terms of the amount of times you might play this kind of club out there on the course. And it can almost become a go-to club that you can lean on even on the tee if you start to struggle with your driver and lose a bit of confidence. So I love everything about the seven wood in general. But then this thing came along and uh, very recently, I tested it out on the course, didn't look at dry ball data, and uh, I played incredibly well on a round of golf out of Portal Championship course. Really love what this does. Now, first of all, why I like it is because of the, the head profile. It's very much, like I said, in between a fairway wood and, uh, and a hybrid. This version, again, that I requested was the one with a little bit more lofting. So I think it comes in maybe 21, 19 and 17 degrees. Um, and like I said, weight forward, apex lineup uh, has very much been aimed at the better player, as Callaway suggests. So this should be a low spinning um, utility wood. Now, it's got a shorter shaft yet again, and very much when you stand over the ball, you stood over the ball looking at what feels like a hybrid rather than even the seven wood, which has, like I said, I think it's 41 and a half inch shaft. It's noticeably different when you stood over this thing. So from a control perspective, I'm sort of loving where I'm stood right now. And I don't think that I have to do a great deal yet again, just to get that ball up there. High launching ball, but, from out there on the course, and from hitting balls in here this morning, I can tell you there's one thing that is very surprising about this club, because I think 
that because of the category that Callaway have put this in, many golfers would just wouldn't even try it. Go on their website and they clearly state this is aimed at that better player. And I hate it when manufacturers do that. I just wish they just, uh, yeah, just avoid that altogether. Because like I said, I think it sends out a real negative message on the type of player that is prepared to give it a go. And you shouldn't, because trust me, there is not a whole lot to separate these two in terms of the performance parameters that we're gonna have a look at with Trackman. The one notable difference between the two, in my opinion, apart from the bit of control and the length of shaft, head profile, all those obvious statements, the Paradigm lineup has a certain feel about it and a sound, which is very, very soft and very, very different than any other club I've tried from Callaway before or any other brands, to be honest with you. This is a bit more traditional in that it's sort of got that sort of louder sound of explosiveness off the face. And like I said, not a, not a big deal for many, but it's something that I would certainly consider. I don't know where you can pick that up. That's very much what I'd expect to hear. Uh, whereas I'm gonna switch one more and hit a, uh, a seven wood. And you maybe just be able to pick up the difference between the two. And if you've tried any, with any of the Paradigm lineup, then you'll be familiar with the fact that they've got a very different feel to them. Well, I've just ruined that theory by catching one off the bottom, so we'll hit one more. That was a terrible swing hand. Trying to make swing changes at the moment. It's affecting my data a little bit, losing a little bit of yardage, but that's better. To be honest with you, it sounded a little bit sharper in here in terms of internally uh, acoustic-wise than, uh, than perhaps what I'd hoped to, but you certainly feel the difference. But the real key element is the surprise when we start to look at that dry ball data. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Hot Golf, the online golf megastore, bringing you the hottest deals in golf. And of course, the clubs featured in today's video. Find the link to the Hot Golf website in the description below and check out some incredible giveaways and offers. And before we get to that dry ball data, I'd just like to hear from you. And uh, is my theory correct in that you would be guided by what you try when you go into a retailer, a custom fitter, based on the category of the club that uh, the, the brand have put it into? Or do you just pay no attention and try everything? I firmly believe that a lot of golfers will avoid certain clubs based on what a manufacturer has said or who they are aimed at, but I'd really be interested in your feedback down below. So before I get into the data, let's just state some obvious things that we're expecting. We've got a shorter shaft in the utility wood, therefore we're going to generate a slower club head speed and generate less distance. But we're also expecting to see because of that weight push forward and because of the Callaway theory that we are into a low spinning version of this kind of club and therefore spin is likely to be lower, lower ball flight and trajectory. And those kind of things would probably consider equaling each other out in terms of overall performance in many ways, in terms of carry distance at least that is. But that is not what I found during this testing. And uh, I'll put you th up on screen as I always do the averages of the two. And the first thing I wanna talk about is club head speed. They were 82 and 84 mile an hour respectively. And that's very much like I said, the length of shaft will have played its part in that. Then go to the ball speed, 121 versus 125 once again will have an impact on the club head speed so that's kind of very much relative and they've both been very efficient in terms of ball speed versus club head speed then go back one into that carry distance and you'll see there is an average of six yards separating these two front to back so pretty much as we'd expect at that point but then you skip forward to this element that I would be surprised about and that's a launch angle of both and the spin number of both because I would have expected to see the seven wood launching at a steeper angle I would also see it reaching a higher peak height and I would also expect it to be spinning a lot higher than that of the utility wood but as you can see that's not the case 3800 spin versus three and a half thousand spin 300 revs negligible in my opinion 
Average launch angle 16 versus 16.2, so very, very similar there. A peak height of, uh, where are we, peak height 84 versus 93, so certainly that 7 wood does rise up to a higher uh, peak height, and that descent angle a little bit steeper um, in terms of land angle 43.9 versus 41.2. Now, in my opinion, the 7 wood would have won that contest if you like in terms of all the parameters i would prefer to meet on a personal level and where i would see a seven wood fitting into my bag however the bit that shocked me is how the utility wood didn't quite do anything like what i expected to do in terms of performance so i'm thinking i've got this low spin monster that's going to just zip out there really low it's going to be like i said low spinning low launching it didn't do that at all in fact when I was testing the two clubs, I couldn't see a great deal of difference in terms of performance between the two. Obviously, Trackman can give you a real accurate reading, and that's where we've got this separation, but it is very minimal. So, the bigger message is the simple one, really, about this video was don't ever be led by what a manufacturer says. Don't ever be put off by a club, by a category that it's put, been put into. This utility wood lineup from Callaway is very, very playable, and I do not believe it is all about for the better player. I think it's a very versatile option to put in the bag, and if you prefer that shorter shaft, if you prefer the head profile, then this is a real viable option to the others that are out there. But either way, these type of clubs are key to making your game a little bit easier in my opinion and putting together a more successful and a more versatile golf bag right that's me done nice and simple very much a lot of head-to-heads coming your way as per your requests if you've got them yourself stick them down below and i will do my best to get them in here with some data and give you some feedback and some guidance as to what i found at least in my hands right as ever, thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon.